Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I the Crafter, and I want to introduce you to another one of my designs. Now, what I'm going to focus on today is Grandfather's Letters. Um, it's a stencil stroke mask, depending on how you use it. Um, it comes in three sizes, 9 by 12 an 8x10 and a 5x7. I have all three of them here with me and I'm going to hopefully try to utilise all of them in the designs I'm doing today. Um, they're manufactured, packaged and sent from PM Artist Studio which is a company based in Texas, USA and of course Kerry the Crafter is me and I've designed them so. So what am I going to do today? Well in, in my usual love of doing backgrounds I'm going to do a 12 by 12. So this is just 12 by 12 cardstock. I believe it's 250 GSM, but this can be done on almost anything you wish. Um, I've also pulled out, you've probably seen these in previous launches. I tend to have strips ready to clean up edges and pick up bits of detail. I think this, look into this, I would say this was from Hopeless Harlequin. And I just basically pick them up and then I can cut these into journal cards, cut them into artist trading cards or ATCs, anything I wish. So, those, so right, let's start. Now, I think I want to go with greens this time. So I'm going to pull out a couple of greens. Need to get a base layer on the back of here. Need something on the go um, just to get us started. So I'm going to use this green. This is called Anise and it's by... PBO, PBO, I can never say that word either. As you can see, I'm a bit challenged when it comes to um, the names of things. I'm going to use some olive green as well. No, it's a bit of a dark colour. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spice it up with a bit of sunflower by Arteza. So those are my three colours I'm going to put down on here as a background. And when I say background, I do mean a background. I'm literally wanting to create something so I can then work upon so I'm going to put my three different colours, or I would if I could get the sun throughout the tube. Come on. Oh, OK, it's coming out now. So I'm going to put them on here, which will enable me to mix them slightly. And then from there on in, I can actually put them on the plate. I tend to like using um, the 5x7 as a palette, purely because I know that I put too much paint down. So... It's a habit I intend getting out of one day, but I don't think it's going to happen any day soon. So just going to take some of the paints, load up my Brea. Now, the reason I've chosen yellow to go with these colours is obviously because yellow is one of the colours in green. So I'm just going to come in. I don't want this to look like military camouflage. So I'm going to mix and Brea quite well as I go along. But I don't mind some mixes of colours or odd patches on the gel plate. It's literally a background I'm planning to create here. So here you go. Um, I'll tell you a few things about the design of this stencil stroke mask as we go along because there is actually a little story behind it, which is quite personal to me and, and my family. So I'd like to share that with you. And also I'll tell you a little bit more about PM Artist Studios as we go along as well, just because I want to. So I'm going to pop my 12 by 12 down on here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bit of tissue on the back of this. No, not. What am I doing? Um, I'm going to pick up my Baron. This is a Baron. And I'm going to make sure I'm just rubbing this back and forth just to press it all down, making sure it's nice and in contact. Um, you don't need a Baron. I like one because I gel press probably three or four times a week. I use my gel plate and I have found that rubbing my hand constantly on paper tends to dry my hands out and it cracks them. Um, so I use a Baron and the Baron is made from, um, I got it from Cody Woodcrafts on Etsy. Um, he makes handmade wooden items that are carved and he's very good at it and I love this. This is this fits my hand perfectly and I love it to death. Okay, we've got stuff on the plate here. So I'm just going to bring some scrap paper in and just lift this off. Now I could be using book page, I could be using tissue, I could be using several things, but I'm just going to use some, some spare art paper. I use all of my um, cleanup sheets, will end up in my collage box because I do tend to use a lot of stuff in collage and I don't like to wave paint. Come on, up here come. Uh, 
There you go. So see, that's already an interesting something. If that was mounted onto a card or something, I would use that for another thing. So this is going to get put to one side and I'll get another sheet later in the on. So, right, we're on here. Let's see where we're at with this. I expect it to be mottled. I expect it to be greens and yellows and, and I can't get it off the plate. Come on. I did condition my plates before I started. So they are really quite sticky at the moment, which is a good thing. Okay, quite nice, loving that. Not really loving that strip down the side, but that's fine. I wonder if there's anything left on my brayer. Well, there's a little bit on my brayer, just to disguise that off. Not that it matters in the bigger picture, it's probably gonna get covered up anyway. So I've started with a nice combination of greens a nice, nice warmish green to me. It's not too acid and I'm liking that. So we're now gonna build on this and what I want to do is I wanna put stuff into the background because these are going to become things like um, almost featured elements, but I do want to put something into the background to pull off, to add a little something to this. So I'm gonna immediately put this to one side. I'm gonna come in and I think I'm gonna immediately use the larger of the stencils or mask, depending on how you use them. Basically, if I had paint down here and I laid this over the top and I pulled the paint off, whatever in, is under here has been masked. If, however, I put this down and I brayer the paint through it, then I pull this off before I pick it up. I've used this as a stencil. It can be confusing, I fully get it. I absolutely fully get it. So I think what I want to do is I want to come in with something like a pale lemon now. Now I thought the other day I bought myself a pale lemon. Where did I put that pale lemon? There you go. I knew I bought a pale lemon. It's a new one for me. I've not used this before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the stencils down and then I'm going to brayer through them using the stencil. Right. Now, if I was to put this down, when I pick this up, it will be backwards. So I need to start with the design backwards. This will work for any numbers or letters you're using. Make sure you have them in the right orientation. For me, I always find the F is the easiest one to remember. So I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna put, put the two of them down here. Now my intent is to have them going on a diagonal here. Now, because it's the fresh, stencils and it's a clean um, gel print plate then I know that they're going to stick there no problem at all. This is a really nice, it's like almost like a lemon cream colour. Liking that, I have to remember this one. So this was Pale Lemon by Winsor & Newton Galleria Acrylics. I remember that one, I like that one for the future. I'm always on the lookout for paints that are both pale and have got a bit of a zing to them, should I say. Right, I'm gonna come in. I don't mind that I'm doing the whole of the plate. I can always clean this up if I really need to. I am giving a little bit of pressure on my brayer to get down into the apertures of the stencil because I want to make sure that the paint gives me as nice of a crisp edge as I can get. I'll just give this one a little bit of a brayer. So, now I'm not looking for perfect. This is a background. It's probably not going to be seen in the final piece of work, but I don't mind if it is or if it's not. So, just add some of this to my brayer or sheet so I don't waste that paint. Now, before I lift this off the surface, I'm going to take a damp cloth. Yes, my cloth looks filthy. It's not filthy. It's actually just stained. It's a face cloth, which I use instead of using um, a wet wipe. So as you can see, I'm just tidying up around the edges. I'm not looking for perfect. I'm not looking for perfect anything with this because as I said, it's a bit of a background. If I happen to take a little bit of the letter off, I don't mind that either. So I'm just gonna come in and I find I'm far more accurate if I do it at this stage than once I've actually picked up the stencil. So, a little bit along there. Now, I've got the ability to do that because here in Wales, 
it's wet, it's humid, and I know that um, my paint isn't going to dry out really, really quickly, which would happen if you were working in a warmer climate. So just be aware of your surroundings and just be aware of what you can and cannot do. And I think that because it's it's very much geographically um, specific, then I can't give advice. Let me get a little bit more down there. I can't give advice specifically to a region or an area, but I can give it to, as a general. So right, let's pull that out of the way. Am I still in shot? I am. So I'm going to lift these off, which gives me a really nice look here. And again, now when it comes to lifting something that's got lots of pieces on it, be gentle. I mean, you pose a tough product, but you don't want to go ripping at something. And I would do the same thing if I was actually working with um, any other sort of stencil as well. So I'm going to bring this in now. I'm going to lay this on the top of this just to pick this up. Now, um, once you've taken your stencils off a painted area, um, as these are, don't stick them on top of each other because they'll marry each other and then you'll have the devil's own job getting them apart. However, if you're someone who cleans your stencils or masks, and I'm not one of those people, I tend to, unless it's got some intricate detail on it, I tend to not. I tend to just let the paint build up on them and then sometimes the paint comes off and transfers onto another print. So if you've got a bowl of water handy, you can always drop them into there. But as I'm using the same stencil and mask time and time again, I know that I'm going to need to keep them dryish. There you go. So that's put a really nice something into the background there. Now, what I want to do now is I want to make sure I come in with something that I'm going to take this edge onto, and I'm really thinking earthy tones. Now, I normally do bright, pretty colours, as most of you know, and this time I'm going to try and do something that's a bit more earthy, a bit more organic in its feel. Okay, so I'm going to come in with a bit of brown now. Now, I'm going to put these just at the top there, just so they're out of harm's way. Now, what colour do I want to choose? I want something that's a bit earthy, but I don't want it so brown. Now, this is mustard yellow. That might not be dark enough. Uh, let's see if I can find terracotta. Terracotta, I think. Is this terracotta? It is terracotta. Right, I think we're going to go with terracotta. And move this to one side a second. And what I'm going to do is I've got some stuff left on the plate. It doesn't bother me in the slightest. I've still got some stuff left on the 5x7. That also doesn't matter to me. I'm just looking to put a really thin layer on and then I'm going to pick some pieces up as we go along. And I'm going to do a technique that I call the kissing technique, whereas I just want pieces of this. I do not want a full coverage because that would be a mistake. So I'm going to put a really thin layer on there. Get, get the majority of it back off so I don't absolutely wipe something out when I'm doing this. I think it's about... Ooh, I nearly dropped the whole lot then. Good catch, Griffiths. Good catch. I think it's about time I cleaned up that in a minute. So right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down and touch the paper down. And what I'm doing is I'm picking up areas of the paint just just to give it a bit of a almost a muddy grungy effect there you go i think that's possibly that's possibly enough so i'm just gonna let oh i need, need a bit on that side it's a bit of a harsh line there right i'm gonna let that sit to one side a second and i'm gonna bring in some of the strips that i have remember these ones are going to become possibly artist trading cards and i'm just going to pick up that spare paint because none of us like to waste paint. So I'm just going to lay some of these down. Now I won't be showing you these at the end of the video. Um, you'll just have to catch them as we work on them and see, see where we're at with them. If one begins to get really blotted out or has a lot of detail on, then I'll just stop using it because it'll be almost ready. Because see, that's got a nice grunginess to it. Not grungy enough yet though. So see, we're just picking up pieces here. That's fine with me. Let's 
pull this little one up, see? Just pulling bits up onto there, giving some coloration to the area. Giving it some interest, if I can get a bit more of that off there. There you go. Now, if I was working um, on my own without the camera, I would be taking a bit more time and I'd be having several 12 by 12s on the go and I would be using every single bit of paint I could pick up in different ways with different masks and different stencils or different techniques. So just know for this video only, however, I'm just going to be doing what I need to do to keep the plate as clean as I can for us to be working on it. So I think I'm going to bring in a damp cloth now. So far. I don't want to so see. right, let's take a quick look as to where we are with this. So I'm looking at that at the moment and actually really liking it. I do want to put a bit of drama into it. I want to pull it into some lightness, then throw it back into darkness again. So I think for me, I'm going to come in with some white. I think we're going to use this again. You must have seen me use this before. It came in packaging. I think it may be some form of a non-slip mat. Um, and that's what that is. So I'm just going to cut that. Uh, cut that. I'm just going to use that. I'm going to lay this down. Now, if I remember my colour wheel correctly, actually, let's get rid of, no, I need that for a second. If I remember my colour wheel correctly, so if I look at my colour wheel, and anyone who wants to know, this is by a company called So Easy, that's S-E-W, Easy, it's for quilters, but I use it as my favourite sort of colour wheel because I can look through this, through the apertures, and it helps me focus on what colour it is. So, my colour is pretty much in this region, which means that the contrasting or the complementary is purples. It's around that area. So I could quite easily go to purples or maroons with this. Also, because it's um, because it's green and I know blue and yellow actually make green, I could then dip into blues should I choose, but I don't think I want it. So, right. So I'm going to come into here. I want to add something with a bit of lightness and I'm wondering whether right, I did use this acrylic it's called Old Ivory by um, Stamperia Allegra I did a playtime with PM Artist Studio because I'd never actually used these paints before so I bought the paints and had a go um, so look that one up, it's out there. Um, I wasn't even aware that Stamperia did paint, so I'm just gonna come in and press it down. See, it just gives me an interesting something, and that's what I'm looking for. There you go. My big fear is that I turn this into something that looks like military camouflage, which is not what I'm looking to do. A little bit of it there. Right, let's move this one out of the way. And I think I just want to take a quick look. I think that's the one I was looking for. Yes. Right, I just wanted to use some of that and I wanted that down the edge of there. Um, this was just one of my arty postcards. It was just a regular postcard and I put onto it um, some tissue paper clean offs from previous gel prints. So I'm just building up the interest on this one, um, as you can see. And I think what I want to do is I want to put some of these letters onto this later on. So I just wanted to prep that. The other ones are here just in case I, I have more paint than I've, I've got use for. So this can go to one side. I've got stuff on here. Let's just get that cleaned up with another bit of paper. Get the clean up sheet. I, I was trying to do some, some Christmas cards earlier on. It's December at the moment. It's only, what is the date? I want to say it's the 20th of December today and I'm trying to make a start on next year's videos, which is fine because I want to get ahead with them. So I'm not sure when this video is coming out. It might be February actually, thinking about it. It might be February. So where am I up to? So I've got some interest on here. Now I did say I can come in with some maroon. I can come in with some burgundy. Um, I need to start punching the colour up a bit on this to give myself a bit of bit of contrast. Um, let's have a think. Now I did say purples work on here, but purple 
isn't exactly, I wouldn't have chosen purple. I'm going by my colour wheel, obviously. Let's see if I've got a dark purple. That looks a bit, a bit Mardi Gras to me. Not sure purple's the right colour. I'm going to veer away from purple on that one. Um, maybe could put some of this on. Now, if I remember right, this is a transparent or very close to a transparent. Maybe. Let's do this. OK, we're going to try this. So what I want to do this time is I'm going to bring in the small one of these this time. And I'm just going to put a little bit of paint in the middle. I'm not I'm not planning on using a lot of this. Um, the way I tend to work is when I start putting something onto a background, I start with the biggest at the back, um, the biggest designs at the back. And then as I come forward, so remember, I need to have my F backwards. As I come forward with the design, I will then um, go smaller. And so I'm just thinking a second. I just need to concentrate a minute while I try and work out where things need to be. I think down there will be enough. I think that's okay. I don't want too much on there because it will look, it will really look too much, but I can definitely put some of it on here and it won't be a problem. See, it just gives me that. Oh, it's really nice. Don't know why I sounded surprised. I absolutely love this the stencil mask. Well, I love all of them, so I, I can't say I love this one any more than the others, because if I didn't love them, I wouldn't have designed them and I wouldn't have approved them to be produ produced. So I'll pick up that bit there. So anyway, well, well, I'm just finishing this and tidying this plate off. A little bit of history about why this is called Grandfather's Letters. OK, my grandfather was he joined the Navy. I believe it was World War One. I'm absolutely certain it was World War I. He was in World War I and World War II. So I don't know which which of the two, two wars this story... I think I'm going to pretty much leave those as they are. This story appertains to. OK, so bear with me. Um, I believe it was World War II, actually, because I think it was against the Germans, if I seem to remember right. OK, anyway, I digress. Um, my grandfather joined the Navy. And when it came time for him to go to training, he was told that he had to have um, a canvas bag with him for all of his belongings to be in. And I think he was allowed a small chest or a small wooden box to keep his personal items in as well. So they were instructed before they went to wherever it was they were going to be training or what, wherever they were going to be, that they needed to prepare these so that all their belongings had to fit into the canvas sack, which I'm sure you're familiar with. It's one of those big sacks they used to wear across their shoulder, like um, had a strap on it and they put their belongings in there. And I said, then I believe there was a small sea chest as well. Can't remember. Anyway, they were told that they had to put their names onto um, the sea chest. Well, my grandfather and grandmother didn't have a lot of money. So my grandfather, being in, being someone who is adept at engineering and stuff, actually made himself a metal stencil of each of the individual letters. So this is actually, I've, I have those original stencils, which are, ooh, they've got to be at least 80 or 90 years old now if not longer. Um, basically, and he hand cut each, each of these and then they come in a metal square. And what I did was I then utilized those and then arranged them and designed them into the shape that covers the whole alphabet. And that's how Grandfather's Letters came about. So they've got a little bit of a side story on that. So let's go back to this now. Now I'm liking this so far. That was not a bad idea. I thought it was going to be a disaster. Not a bad idea. I do think I want to put some white onto this and then I think I want to put some Payne's Grey, um, which is possibly what the letters are going to be, the, the smaller letters are going to be in, or they might be in a brown. I'm not sure. We need to think about that one. So I want to put some white onto here now. 
I would normally reach for um, bubble wrap, but I think bubble wrap is wrong. But I do like my favorite corrugated cardboard, and I think I'm gonna reach for that one. I'm gonna put a white on the plate. Oh, I would if I, ooh, that's a big dob of something on there. Uh, off, out the way. So I do need to say thank you to all of you who have already purchased my designs. I know that you've been buying them and I've seen some of the artwork you're doing with them and thank you. It's wonderful to see what you're doing with the work. You're taking things that were in my imagination and you're turning them into pieces of art of your own. And that is absolutely wonderful because when I design something, I kind of have an idea in mind as to what I would use it for. Now I'm just going to turn this so that I can get a 90 degree on some of these. Um, however, that doesn't mean that's the only use for that stencil or mask. And I tend to find that I'm, I'm a bit blinkered in the fact that I know what I want to use them for, but that isn't necessarily what anyone else would use them for. Right, I think this is going to go to one side a second. And what I want to do is I want to pull in this postcard, this postcard, and possibly this postcard. And I'm just going to put some of this paint onto these in lines because I've got it on the go. Um, so yes, thank you very much. It's, it's absolutely wonderful to see what you're all doing with it. So please, if you are creating and you do have a social media account, please just make sure you actually tag me or mention me in the comments so I can actually pick up on it and actually get a look to see what you've done. It's, I think it's fascinating to see how one person's imagination, what's the wrong way? One person's imagination can be turned into several different things. And that's what you're doing. You're actually taking my imagination, e.g. the layout of the letters, and I'm using them in one way, you could use them in another way, and it's your artistry that actually will show the versatility of the piece. So anyway, I'm rambling on, but you know what I mean. Okay, this is lovely, and I think I'm gonna pick up that on a few strips so it's not wasted. I have no idea how long this video is going to be, but I can't imagine it's going to be a long video because I think we're almost getting to the point for really some finishing touches. That's looking good. Um, some finishing touches to them and then once that's done, I might be able to pop in and do a couple of those postcards and finish them off just to show you where I'm up to. So, right, that's on there, that's on there. Let's get this off here onto the brayer off sheet. It seems a bit weird putting putting white onto a white brayer or sheet and then just use this bit of paper to lift this up. So who are PM Artist Studio? PM Artist Studio are these two lovely ladies. This lady here is P or Patricia. This is M or Mariah, hence PM Artist Studio. Um, they're a family run business um, one of their secret weapons is Brad, which is Mariah's husband, who helps out with some of the design work on with the software. Um, there's also Mariah's daughter and Patricia's granddaughter, Izzy, who's contributing as well to the world of artistry. I love that. I can't remember how old she is. Um, she hasn't long started school, so if you're in America, you can probably guess roughly what age that is. Um, they do do lives three times a week. And Central means Central American time. Recommend you go and see them. Just pop onto YouTube, find PM Artist Studios, have a watch of one of the lives. It's two hours. It's fun. It's educational. It's it's a good old laugh. It's a great community. I try my absolute darndest to be part of every one of the lives in the live chat. So if you want to get hold of me or you've got a question, I'm by all means... Ask me in that live chat and Patricia and Mariah have no problem whatsoever with um, conversations, interaction with people. And they're just a loving, supporting community. Please 
go and have a check them out. Okay, just check them out. And if you are on the live feed, um, they have different levels that you can actually join in and contribute to their business, which then gets you higher and higher discounts if you choose. So anyway, and that's where we're that with that. Just take, oh, this is really, really stuck to my plate. Let's just clear that off. That's just give me a little something extra. Right, so I just want to see where I'm at with this. Now I'm, oh, I've left one on here. Haven't I? Let's pull that little sucker off. So I think we're not a million miles away. Now the only one I really want to use now is the little one, but I want to spend a second and look and go, have I got enough on there? I think I have. I quite like to put some sort of um, edging on this just to almost knock the colour back slightly. Now my instinct is to go for black and I think black is wrong at this point. I mean, let's have a look. I've got some other shades of green, like this is quite, oh it's not the right green at all. Now I do have the olive green I started with which may not be a bad idea actually because it's already in there. Let's let's use this one. Now at this point you're probably screaming, Kerry don't do it, Kerry don't, don't do it. Get over it, I'm doing it. So we also don't need a lot. I'm just going to do the kissing technique again um, with the corners. So literally I'm going to come in and put a thin layer of this down. And if it happens to pick up some of the white bits that are still on there, so be it. I just want to give a sort of shadow effect in the corners. So I'm just going to come in, I'm going to touch it down and lift it off. Just, just to give it a bit of interest there. I'm going to do that on all four corners. That one needs a bit more on it. I was a bit too gentle with that one. Don't mind a bit in there as well. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make sure the back is actually, the background is the background. Let's leave that for a second. So I just change of mind again. I'm going to bring these back in as they were before. Not necessarily exactly as they were before, because goodness knows I'm never going to be able to match all that up. And I'm just going to put some white letters down. I'm going to come in, just a bit of white acrylic paint. Not a huge amount. I'm just looking for almost a ghost impression of the letters. So I'm just going to come in and I'm not even brayering the whole of the stencil. I'm just brayering patches of it so I can pick up certain letters. I'm not going to lay the piece on the surface again. I'm literally just picking up bits of these letters. I'm looking for kind of a ghosted effect. So let's pull that off. Pull that off. Right, I'm going to come in. Now as long as it's vertical or horizontal, I don't mind what it looks like. I just don't want letters on an angle. I'm also not looking. Um, because it doesn't bother me. I mean, it's just making things interesting. Right. Okay, I know that looks really confusing, but I actually like it because now you can see hints and ghosts of the colour in the background, um, of the letters in the background, but it doesn't mean you've got a perfect letter anywhere, which is exactly what I want before I put these ones on. And I'm looking at thinking if I got the right size. Maybe I'll use this one on the postcards. I'll use this one on here. Right, that needs a bit of a clean off. Now, before I do the finishing touches, which is the letters, have I really done enough? I think I'd like to add some yellow to this because we've got yellow in it, but I kind of lost some of my yellow. Right, change of heart again. Um, this is the creative process, guys. Um, it literally is put it on, pull it off, put it on, pull it off. Um, 
I'm thinking more of the, no, the mustard isn't going to be punchy enough, is it? Right, we're going back to the yellow, the sunflower one. Oh, that was a bit more than I thought I needed. Never mind. So again, I'm just going to put a thin layer of this down. off my brayer and I'll come in and again I want to pull in pieces of yellow that's better it's it's one of those things that I don't know what I need I need to go by my instincts and my instinct said put yellow so I went with yellow All right let's put that to one side let's pull in a couple of the strips we've got on the go Let's see if we can pull up any of the letters that are sat down there as well. And I think this is the last time we'll be using these strips also because we'll be going on to a different thing after this. So whatever these pull up will be whatever they pull up. There's my baron gone. All right, now one of my instincts was I kept thinking I needed to add red but I'm so wary if I add red that things begin to look like Christmas. Now it could be that Christmas is on my mind because it's, it's only a few days away. But I do quite like that. Mm, thinking, thinking, thinking. Right, let's see what we've done with these strips. As I said, this is the last time we'll see these strips. Okay, cool. That's a nice background start feature work on. And that one, nice autumnal colours on that one. Those would make nice autumn tags for a junk journal. Again, nice autumn. These are really nice autumn colours. I must remember this combination. Yep, loving that. Now, I know someone in the comments is going to say... Kerry, if this was about your grandfather being in the Navy, why didn't you do blue? Because blue would have been predictable. And um, my first instinct was, Kerry, use blue. But then I thought, you know what? I'm, I'm trying to do things that I don't normally do. So I chose not to do blue. And blue being one of my favourite colours, um, that's quite a hard choice not to do, to be honest with you. Right, this just go, go to one side, not because it's ready, but it's just getting a bit soft or it's getting wet with paint. So let's have a bit of a clean up. And then I'm just going to have one more look at this to make sure that I'm making the right decision as to my next moves. Which is always guesswork. So, right, so plates are ready. I'm wondering, where's that? So I'm looking for permanent magenta. Oh, actually, there's the purple. My colour wheel did say this was the right colour to use. Let's, let's think about that for a second. As I said, we're going to use this one on postcard, so... I love this one. I'm wondering well, how big is this as far as an ATC goes. So if an ATC was three and a half inches, which is about there by two and a half inches, oh, you could get quite, you could get four nice designs on an ATC or artist trading card from that. That was unintentional, but really like that. Okay, right. I think I need black. I know I've bounced back and forth with the idea. I'm also going to come in with my good old favourite, which is some bubble wrap. That bubble wrap's looking very tired, if you ask me. Um, let's get a bit of black. Oh, have I got Payne's Grey somewhere? I did say Payne's Grey, didn't I? Payne's Grey, which is almost black. Obviously, it's not almost black, it's Payne's Grey. But you get what I mean. So let's just spray this out a bit. Payne's Grey is sort of... I think each of us perceive colour slightly differently. And to me, Payne's Grey is, it's almost like a really 
dark, dark blue. That's actually turning out better than I thought. It's not picking up a lot because of previous layers of paint. That'll play to my favour. It's a very grungy type of appearance. Okay, I'm liking that. That wasn't that wasn't what I was hoping it would do. But it is turning into something really interesting. That's giving it a quite a nice grungy appearance. Yes, that was a good move. That was not an intentional move, but it was a good move. Right, just get a bit of tissue paper on the go over here, just to clean off my five by seven. Um, no, I know meant to say too is one of my subscribers and I cannot remember who you are I'm sorry I am horrible 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 with names I mean there's only my sister and I left in the family and very often I'll forget who she is or at least forget her name anyway and I've known her for close to 60 years now so yeah I'm bad with names it's it's something my mother never had either was the ability to remember names the amount of times my mother would call the dog in from the garden by either my name or my sister's name. Yeah, it's in the gene pool, people. It's in the gene pool. So, um, anyway, whoever it was, um, asked me to work with um, the shaped gel plates. Well, this is what I got for Christmas off somebody. Um, one of my, was it my friend? I can't remember who it was. Friend or relative anyway, because any or wanted them. So, yes, there will now be a video. I haven't even unpacked this. So I will unpack it on screen. Yeah, I can't get a scissors to get into this. Um, and then we'll have a good old play. Oh, actually, I can get into it there. So we'll have a good old play, because I'm not sure, never use them. Um, I don't even know what I can do with them. So need a bit of a play with that. Okay, really, 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 really loving this at the moment. Make sure it's not fully stuck down. Um, I really am loving that. I'm thinking yes for this colour. But I'm still thinking I want white. I need to think of something that will give me a touch of white that's not going to overpower this. This is actually um, a non-slip mat. So I think I'm going to use that in white. So let's just put a little bit of that on here. Don't need a huge amount. Must remember, less is more when it comes to this because this is already quite a busy background. So I'm going to pull this in pick it up, pop it down. That was it, that's what I was looking for. Just a little ghost of it in the middle. There you go, that was it. Right, the background I believe is now finished. So I'll just clean this off a bit. And then we're going to get, get the magenta into it. Now, to do the magenta, I don't actually need it on this plate. And I don't actually need the plate. So let's put the plate down to one side. So it's out of harm's way. That needs a bit of a clean off. So there you go. Now, um, I will put the link to um, Grandfather's Letters in the description box and the description box is if you look below if there's some wording for description it might say read more if not if you see this little gray v in this corner click on that will drop down i will put the link to it um the link will take you directly through to pm artist studios uh, studio website where um everything is packaged and mailed if you were to go to my website and click on it there it would also take you through to their website because to be honest with you i just have to forward the order onto them anyway because i i don't manufacture or pack or ship they do so right clean that off right now what i'm going to do with the magenta and i am going to use this color now this time because i'm going to work through the stencil i want my f to be the correct orientation and i'm going to come in i'm going to get myself a bit of a sponge it's just a piece of sponge packaging that I've cut into a square and I'm going to sponge through the stencil itself to give me areas of detail now I do not want a lot on my sponge 
that's one of the main mistakes people make when they use um, this technique is they put too much paint on their sponge and then wonder why it goes underneath build up the build up the color so I'm just going to come in I mean if it does go underneath the edge of the stencil it's not going to be harmful to it it just means you won't have an overly crisp crisp impression of the stencil it happens it happens to all of us so so I'm just am I in shot I am in shot okay suddenly had a panicked moment then thinking oh my goodness not even looked so I'm going to be selective and just take certain areas and my aim is I'm going to use pretty much every letter on here but I'm not going to repeat a letter anywhere come on up you come that yeah that was a really good idea right I'm going to turn this not because I need to but because um, I find I can see things better if I keep turning my um, work. That way I get um, a 360 impression of what I'm designing and I don't get something that's just one design only, uh, one directional only. So I try to do things in a 360. So I'm just going to come in, pick up some of the letters. Now, obviously, I can see which letters I've used before because they've got the permanent magenta on them. Let's get that lump off there. And it is quite easy once you've got a sponge that's squared off to go close to the edges of things. So don't panic about I'm going to go over the edges. If you are panicking of that or think you're going to do that, then by all means use some washi tape or a bit of paper and just mask off the area you want to work within and then you're in no danger of actually going through the stencil and over the edge. It's a little tricky to clean up the paint once it's on the print or on the, on the paper or card should I say. This is possibly one of my favorite ways to add paint to stuff is with a sponge. Now these little sponges, um, you could use a makeup sponge. I tend to go to my local, in the States it would be a dollar store, in here in Britain it's called Poundland. And I just buy like car wash sponges, baby bath sponges, anything like that. And I will just cut them into squares. I'm quite lucky, as I don't know if you've seen the video or not, um, we had work done on the house a couple of months ago. And... The workmen were throwing out all of the foam packaging and to be honest I nabbed the whole lot so I won't be buying sponge for a fair time now. Right I think that's as much as I want on that bit. That's looking good right now I tend to work in threes so I'm going to put some down here. I've got to be a bit careful on its placement to be honest because those are very much in line with each other. If I can come down this line of letters here, I think that that will work. Sorry, this is a little time consuming, but to be honest with you, I'm not one that fast forwards very often. Um, by all means, feel free to skip ahead or fast forward yourself or pause me, go and have a cup of coffee or a cup of tea and come back afterwards. I don't object to that at all. That's what I do with other people's videos. Sometimes a video of an hour long is a little bit more time than I've got to spend in a day. So I will, am I still in shot? Barely. Um, so I will start watching a program one day, a uh, video one day, and go back to it the next. So I, I used to really worry that my videos were too long when I first started. But so many of you actually said, Kerry, don't ever worry about that. We're enjoying them. So I've just, I've taken your comments on board and I now just... I, I do what's necessary to get the piece done. I try when I edit to cut out anything like cleaning the plate or any unnecessary repeated process, but this I think is actually a good thing to be, see repeated. Okay, I'm liking that. I don't like the way that is so lined up with that. So I think I'm gonna come in. I've got a couple of letters here that haven't been used. And I think if I put these two in, it will spread 
this design in this way. Let's see if I can get the X and the Y on here. And then I might do the reverse on that side to try and take the design out sideways. Um, I'm probably going to get a question as to why I don't do things on the diagonal. Um, things on a diagonal will either lead the eye out of a page or into a page. Um, so you need to make sure it's an intentional decision to do that. Um, for me, it needs to be an intentional decision to do that anyway. Um, yeah, I, I tend not to do it. It's just, it just isn't something I do. So, and my mind... My mind feel, finds looking at things on a horizontal or a vertical um, more aesthetically pleasing than things on a diagonal. Mind you, in saying that, I do very often throw a diagonal in just to prove that I can do it. Okay, this bit here, there must have been something on the back of the stencil that lifted that off, so I'm just going to find the J again wherever the J is, and I'm going to put the J back in place. And I'm just going to come in and put a bit of colour back over the top of that one. And it's done. So I'm quite liking that. Now I'm wondering whether it needs anything else. And I'm not sure that it does. Um, I quite like the grunginess of it, and I, I'm wondering whether I should try and enhance the grunginess of it. Maybe. What can I put on there? Okay, right. I'm going to bite the bullet. I kept saying black, no black, black, no black, black, no black. We're all sick of me saying black, no black. Let's put some black on it. And I'm just going to use that corrugated card just to put the odd line in it. And the, the straight lines will accentuate the linear effects of this. And it's going to add to the grunginess of it. And I'm just trying to get some connectivity between the letters. And I need a bit in there too. This has been a very different colour palette to what I normally do, guys. I think just, oh, no, I can't do it. I don't want squares. I just want lines. Right. I think we need to leave alone, says he, adding one more line. OK, right. I think that one's done and dusted. I really do think that's done and dusted. Right, we'll go look at that later. We can put that to one side. Right, let's quickly pull in a couple of those postcards. So let's put a bit of a clean mat down so I can actually work without, without getting stuff all over the place. So I'm going to use the little one of this. And I'm quite liking the idea of adding it on here. Now it's a smaller stencil, so I've got to be a little bit more cautious. And I'm going to pick up the black from here Got to be a little bit more cautious of where I'm dabbing this sponge just to make sure that I don't go over the edges. Now I'm looking for a washed out black on this. I'm not looking for a solid black. I'm looking for almost a ghost of a letter in the background here. Am I in shot? I am in shot. And the reason for that is I'm probably going to put something as a feature onto the top of this design which I haven't yet decided on, so I can't actually finish it off now. I'm looking to sort of make the design almost go up in this direction. As I said, I'm trying to get a ghosted, ghosted look to this. There you go, that gives me, now there will be something else. Maybe there'll be a cutout of something. I'm not sure, maybe there'll be, I don't know. I'm not sure yet. And then with this one, I think I'm going to come in and where have I got the blues? Windsor blue. Right, I'm going to add some Windsor blue to the black that's on the plate. 
and that will just make it probably more of a navy blue than a blue blue and I'm just going to come in I think I'm going to go across the bottom there so if I turn it this way on it'll be easier for me to do Right, it's quite handy because if you look at some of the letters, there's a straight edge to them. So it means you can line it up with the edge of the plate if you really, like me, need to have things in horizontals and verticals. Now this time I'm looking for quite a dramatic um, line of letters because this, this is going to be the bottom half and it's going to be the finish of this. And then there'll be something different on the top that I'm still unsure about yet because I haven't done it. It's moved. If you do find things move on you guys, it's probably moving it's on this non slit um this cleanup mat, which is slightly annoying. Now I'm actually going to blend up a little bit as well. So I'm going to go over the edge because it's an interesting line. And then I'm going to fade this up into the top area. There you go. And then what I'll do is I will put something featuring up there, which will just carry the design through. So I think, not think, I know we're finished. Let's move that out of the way. Let's get rid of the mat that has caused me a slight problem. This will go to one side because I'm going to use that when I've turned the camera off. I can utilize on something else. A little bit of a cleanup of me and potentially my workstation. And then we'll have a little last review of what we've done. And then I'm going to say we're done, guys. So um, a quick look at the two postcards we did, which were things done just, just to utilize, show that I could use a small one. I am loving this. And if I look at um, an ATC card, this is an artist trading card. I could quite easily pull sections of that out there. That's the wrong color card to be showing you, isn't it? Um, let's pull out a white one. Right, here's a blank ATC. So as you can see, you could utilize at least the four corners of this and maybe in the middle if you were to use it for an ATC background, which I think look really cute. I may do that in the future. So these were the two postcards we did, um, ready for features. As I said, we're building backgrounds here. And then the 12 by 12 I did, which as you'll agree, is a very different color palette for me. And here we are. So now I have no idea which orientation I want it in. Probably this way, actually. I think the F upside down for some reason would look just a little bit peculiar to me. So what did I work with? I worked with grandfather's letters in a 5x7, an 8x10 and a 9x12. And they all come from PM Artist Studio. They're all unique designs by myself. And I think we're done, guys. So thank you very much for watching. Um, remember, links will be in the description box. And that just leaves me to say goodbye. So I'm Kerry the Crafter, that's C-E-R-I, the Crafter. Until next time, bye-bye now.